So if you rearrange this equation, you can get L over D equal to Okay. Let's start with the easy one. The ratio between bulk viscosity and viscosity of the fluid at the surface, mu B over mu zero, are calculated and it is equal to 0.89. All right. Prandtl number is already calculated to be 0.7. What is TB2? That's bulk temperature at the outlet. So TB2 here will be 230. Okay? So that's 230. And TB1 is the inlet temperature of the bulk. That's 70. How about delta T log mean? By definition, Delta T log mean would equal to temperature difference at the inlet subtracted by temperature difference at the outlet divided by difference in logarithm. Okay? By the formula itself, if you try to see the form of formula, sometimes it, it looks confusing. But just try to understand that delta T log mean is the average is how we take the average. Average of what? Average of temperature difference. So when you draw the picture like this, find the temperature difference at each end. Let's say at first end here, you will have T01 subtracted by TB1. Or you may, you may write it down like this. Delta T in minus delta T out divided by ln of delta T in minus ln of delta T out. You take delta T in subtracted by delta T out and then take the logarithm in front of the delta T in the denominator. Okay? Delta T in from the picture here, driving force is here. That would be T01 minus TB1. Delta T out would be T02 minus TB2. And then logarithm, difference of the logarithm would equal to logarithm of the ratio. Right? All of these four numbers, T01, T02, TB1, TB2, are known. So that delta T log mean can be calculated. If you plug all the numbers in there, you get delta T log mean to be 72.2. Plug everything back to original equation, then you can get length to diameter ratio. Okay? Diameter is given to be two inches so that you can calculate length out. All right, any question? So that's it for chapter 14. Everything is done. 
So on the review, we start talking about energy transport from the very beginning. Energy transport, again, you have flux of energy going into the system and going out. Flux is consisting of three terms. Conduction, convection, work, right? Conduction, convection, and flow work. Combined, you get combined flux. If you take combined flux into a shale balance, you can get input flux minus output flux plus work, plus the work by external force, plus the work, plus the energy production equal to zero. That's become shear balance, right? The way we set up the shear balance is the same as we set, when we set up the shear balance for momentum. That means when you set up the shear balance, you need to look into your system, find direction where temperature is changing. In that direction, the shell supposed to be thin, or the thickness of the shell in that direction supposed to be delta or something. Okay? Once you set up shell balance, you integrate it once, you get differential equation representing the flux. Then you can convert the flux into temperature using definition of combined flux. You integrate it twice, you get temperature profile. Right? For the chapter 11, it is the same principle. You take the whole general shell, define the equation that can be used for any kind of shell. That equation is called uh, equation of energy. In that equation of energy, you still have input term, output term, external work, energy production equal to zero. Same thing. Okay? But I told you that the overall energy balance can be divided into two parts. The parts that represent only mechanical energy are the one similar to Bernoulli equation. And the other one that represent the change in internal energy. And I told you that whenever you have system in which temperature is changing, you can neglect mechanical energy. You can focus on internal energy only. That's come to equation of energy in form of internal energy. In that equation, you, you will have input term, output term, production term, and also you have energy dissipation. Energy dissipation is phi, right? That's directly related to viscous heat. So whenever you have low velocity, low viscosity, viscous heat would be neglected. And then you can take energy, equation of energy, to find temperature profile. Just drop some terms that are equal to zero. Okay? So essentially for the problems, that's it. You set up equation, you integrate it twice, you get temperature profile. The difficulties re relating to energy balance or energy transport comes from math. Because equation is always complicated. Whenever you have convection, equation will be normally very complicated. So the point is, how can we simplify the equation? Simplification will be done based on assumption. So you need to understand your system. And I like to emphasize here, when you analyze the problem, you need to write it down, whether you have convection, conduction, in which direction. And then you need to compare convection in compare convection and conduction in the same direction. Which one is more important? The less important one can be dropped. Okay? Then the rest would be math. That's you are on your own. Okay? So I'd like to give you one example. Oh, another thing that we talk in, in this part would be Newton's law of cooling. And the concept of Newton's law of cooling would try to combine convection and conduction together and represent it by using simple equation. Okay? That equation that we use is called Newton's law of cooling. 
Normally, whenever you use Newton's law of cooling, it means that you have convection. It implies that you have convection. But that convection will be represented by a simple equation. So Newton's law of cooling will be approximation. Instead of trying to get nonlinear temperature profile, Newton's law of cooling would try to simplify it, divide it, divide the whole system into two zones. The first zone, it is remain. I mean, it is assumed that the temperature in that zone is constant. That zone is called bulk. And the other zone in which temperature is changing with respect to position, that zone is called film resistance. Okay? Newton's law of cooling assumes that temperature change in the film resistance will be linear. So that simple equation like equation for conduction can be applied. The point for Newton's law of cooling is we can manipulate equation using one variable called heat transfer coefficient. Heat transfer coefficient would be calculated or approximated based on experimental data. Okay? So you can use simple equation as long as the heat transfer coefficient here will be found to be correct number. That heat transfer coefficient will be normally expressed in terms of dimensionless number called Nusselt number. And it will be given as a function of Reynolds number, Prandtl number, and so on. Just in chapter 14. Okay? So, in the essence or in the core, that's it for energy transport. Now, let's see whether you can do this. <laughs>